Good evening, uh, YouTube world. This is Uncle Fester with Shade Tree Survivalist, and uh, this is part two of the two pillars of love. Um, you have to forgive me. My <laughs> I ran out of space in the first part, and I had to download that to get it off the phone so that I could finish up this part. I've drug on a little bit further, a little bit longer than what I intended to. Um, the last point that I was getting to, I believe, in, uh, was in discussing where fit forgiveness fits in with patience. Um, one of the points that come that I was trying to make it in that our forgiveness from God rests on our ability to extend the same forgiveness that God's given us to our fellow man or person or family member or whoever fellow human being I guess um, everybody I think or maybe not everybody but anybody that's been within church uh, has heard the story about the king that sat down and forgave a man a, a debt that he owed him that uh he couldn't pay back to the king and never pay but could pay back to the king and, and and because he was earnest in the fact that he told him you know look i'll do everything i can to pay you back he forgave him the debt and then as soon as he got forgiven of that debt he goes out and finds his brother who doesn't owe him that much money or that big of a debt and sits down and says, uh, you know, pay me your money. And he tries to beg off and then he basically gives him the full tilt punishment that he could give, you know, his fellow brother who didn't owe nowhere near as much as what he owed the king. Um, that's basically how it works with us when it comes down, you know, to have patience for somebody. To hard, rather to have patience with somebody you have to have a forgiving spirit if you don't have a forgiving spirit and the ability to sit down and let that other person make a mistake or owe you that debt or you know treat you with disrespect and not seek out to to give an eye for an eye I guess um that's where patience flows from is that forgiving spirit that's not to say that you have to be a doormat or you have to sit down and let people just walk all over you or um, however you want to sit down and think of that but at the same time you have to have the ability to not lose your temper or lose your, your composure or seek out vengeance of your own people who are unforgiving are their own worst enemy because they run their self through a thousand times over on the own on their own sort of unforgiveness than what and do far worse things to their self than what you could ever do to them when they come at you and they attack you um miserable people seek to make seek company you know misery loves company if they're miserable they want to make you as miserable as they are so that they feel justified in their misery um you know i think uh peter being uh the type of person that he was he sat down and asked god you know he said uh, how many times should we forgive a man an offense in a day you know i think the tradition at the time was uh, seven times within one day if a man you know uh, committed a, something against you seven times and asked you for forgiveness seven times I, I guess in, the, in that particular day you know you got to the, the eighth time and you just let him have it I guess and you could be completely justified um, Jesus took it a step further he, he sat down and said no he says not seven times the seven times 70 which is 490 times in one day for one the same offense that if somebody commits the same offense against you 400 and 
90 times in one day. I hope my math is right on that. If it's not wrong, I'm sure somebody will let me know in the comments. But anyway, if that person commits that same offense against you that many times in one day and comes back to you and says, you know, I was wrong for that, forgive me. You are to be patient with that person and give them that forgiveness. Um, I think the hardest people to be long-suffering and patient with are the, the people that you are around every day. Especially family, or especially between a husband and a wife, um, between you know parents and their children, between a, a child and their and their parents, you know the, the the these are people that you have grown up around your entire life, and it's very easy to take for granted, you know, that they you know when they do something that that irritates you or they do something that just sets you off that it's very hard to have a forgiving spirit with this person because you're around them much more than you are any you know you, if, if a stranger gives you offense it's just like that guy in the car that cut me off you know it's, it's easy to sit down and say well you know i don't know where he's coming from i don't know what, what was on his mind or what he was thinking about or and then he's gone out of your life you don't you don't deal with him anymore when it is somebody that you live with day in and day out and they commit an offense against you and it gets under your skin and and you and especially because they these you know your family are generally the people are, that are going to commit that same offense over and over be it you know in my case being irresponsible you know, you could be irresponsible over and over and over again, and they just get to a point where they say, "You know, I'm tired of you being irresponsible. Uh, my life's going to be easier without you around." You know, see you. Or it might be in your case that that uh, maybe you know you're an alcoholic, and you know you've tried you're trying to quit, and you know, you fall off the bandwagon, you get back on the bag bandwagon, you fall off the bandwagon, you get back and some you know somebody gets to the point where they sit down and say, "Well, you know you're never going to give this up, so um you know I'm not going to forgive you about this anymore, you know you need to get out and, and move on um, It's reaching that point where somebody's had enough, and they sit down and say, "You know there's the road." I think that we must really take it to heart that in dealing with relationships that I know in my case that I can sit down and say to you unequivocally that God is the God of second chances and third chances, and fourth chances, and fifth chances and so on and so forth. Um, he's given me many second chances. Uh, do those second chances run out? Perhaps. I don't know. I'm not going to say that they don't. I'm not going to say that they do. I know that I feel like as long as a person is willing to get back up and to humble themselves come back to God or go back to that same person and say look I messed up you know I know that I have this problem I'm working on it I'm trying that I believe God took on flesh so that he could understand what it was to be human you know we are one of the few religions that our God took on our weaknesses he took on the, the flesh in his perfection so that he could understand where we were coming from, what it was that we were experiencing. You know, you know, an eternal God went through the indignity of being born and having Mary change his diaper and burping him. I mean, all of the indignities of being a child. 
he went through that and I believe that Jesus was sentient of what he was going through because while he was fully man at the same time he was fully God and he was willing to bring himself down to our level so that he could understand where we were coming from so that he could understand what it was to be us you know you can't look at God and say well you don't understand what it's like to be us because he he does and I think we must follow that example in dealing with the people in our lives that when they make those mistakes and it's the same mistake over and over and over again and they make that mistake and they come to us you know at first they might not be um, really repentant you know they're just telling you what you want to hear because they just want to go back to doing what they're doing you know I, I went through that stage where you know yeah what I was doing was wrong I won't do it again and then you know you're right back doing whatever it was that you shouldn't have been doing again I understand that um, sometimes at that particular time and moment they don't have they're not in a place where they can't stop what they're doing um, in having patience that doesn't mean that you enable them to do things you have to you have to hold people to certain standards you have to hold their feet to the fire you have I mean even God is love as loving a God as he is he's a righteous judge and there comes a time where when he judges us he has to judge us in rightness that's why there's a hell that's why you know he didn't create hell for us he created hell for for Lucifer and, and those the, those angels that followed him but still you know hell is enlarged to accept those who reject Christ patience flows out of forgiveness if you're going to be able to forgive people you have to understand where they're coming from you know it's easy to sit down and say well you can quit drinking anytime you want to if that's not your addiction if that's not what your your particular weakness is but when it comes down to your weakness and and let's say your your weakness happens to be maybe pornography and it's like well that's different no it's not different it's just different just because they sin different from what you do that doesn't make it really any different you're both sinners it's just that you happen to have a different addiction than what he does so in conclusion of this because I've really rattled on a lot longer than what I meant to let us always try to see things from the other person's perspective and try to understand why that person does what they do and then understanding that have enough tolerance to forgive that person and to have patience with that person and to have long suffering with that person so that in forgiveness we can reach out to that person and, and help bring them up out of whatever it is that they're away from that imperfection that that uh, is in them and I think the only way that you do that is with patience and kindness and unconditional love when you love somebody and you love them regardless I think we all seek that kind of love that's why we have pets because you know my wife has always told me you know well there ain't no love like like the, the the love of an animal because they love you unconditionally and I usually I used to laugh at her and say yeah stop feeding it and see how long it comes to you you know being facetious but of course at the same time there are animals that even if you didn't feed them they would still come to you and they still wouldn't leave you they would starve to death there are people out there who are starving for love they are starving for 
some for, for, for forgiveness for someone to sit down and look at them and tell them you know hey yeah you're, you're messed up right now but uh, you're not too far gone you haven't gone too far there's still hope people can live without love but people can't live without hope they find hope in that unconditional love and patience and forgiveness that God extended to us when we were still enemies against him so if God extended that grace which is you know the definition of grace is that which you do not deserve and that you cannot earn so he gave us something that we didn't deserve and something that we couldn't ever earn if he extended that grace to us and that m mercy, you know, mercy is not giving someone something that they deserve. You know, we deserve death, we deserved hell, but he had, he gave us mercy so that in dealing with someone that irritates us or someone that gets under our skin or someone that we don't particularly like or someone, you know, whether it be your wife, your child, your whatever, to sit down and extend that same grace and that same mercy with patience and kindness. You would be surprised how much of a better world and how much better our relationships would be if we could reach a point where we could be this way with everyone. And I think I've rambled on about that long enough. I hope that uh, this video helps someone out there. I, help, I hope that it um, makes you think, makes you change something for real. Um, that's what I'm trying to do this for. I'm trying to effect change in my life and to effect change in anyone's life. If you want some a different result, you have to do something that you've never done before. So I'm doing things that I've never done before. And you know, you don't see that just like in like in the, the laws of the harvest. You know, you might, if you plant a seed today, you're not gonna go out there tomorrow expecting for it to be have a full grown you know, if I put a kernel of corn in the ground, I'm I'm not gonna uh, you know, today I'm not gonna go out there and, and come out the next day and go out there and expect a stalk with a whole bunch of uh ears of corn on it. It don't work like that. It takes time. It, there's cultivation, there's preparation, there's uh, tending that goes on with things, things that have to line up. So the seeds that you plant today may be watered by somebody else. And, you know, the, the, the tree that you plant today, you know, your grandkids might be the, be the only ones that be, are able to sit under the shade of it, but still it's that shades there because you planted the seed so let us be patient i hope to get the uh, next video out maybe i won't be so long-winded in it i'm going to be talking about something that that uh is a weakness of mine which is kindness trying to show kindness because patience without kindness is only half the solution so um those of you out there in YouTube world, uh, I hope God richly blesses each one of you and that uh, you are able to be good to one another and show the same love and forgiveness that God showed you. This is Uncle Fester with Shade Tree Survivalist signing off. Have a good day.